Traditional brushes naturally create a complex and varied appearance, but it takes a bit more work to get the same effect from digital brushes. In this lesson, I will share some techniques that will help your brushes look more organic and feel less digital. There are two primary ways to create natural looking brushes. The first is to add complexity, and the second is to add randomization. Complexity means you've added enough properties and expressions to make the brush look intricate and behave dynamically. Randomization is important because our brains are wired to spot patterns. So if all of your strokes and dabs look identical, it will stand out and make the painting look too synthetic. If you want to create digital art that emulates traditional art, you need to be able to create marks that don't all look the same. Applying some randomization helps to create enough variation to please the eye. Let's start by looking at an example of how to add both complexity and randomization using the paper grain properties. Papers and grain work together to control how much the brush medium penetrates the texture of the surface you're painting on. A real world example of grain is chalk on a sidewalk. The chalk rubs off on the most elevated parts of the sidewalk surface and does not penetrate into every crevice. If I select the worn pavement paper, you can see that my stroke looks a lot like chalk on a sidewalk. Grain textures come in all varieties, from organic substrates like papers and canvas, to patterns that are natural or unnatural. To really emphasize the effect grain is having on the dabs, let's increase the spacing to 100%. Then paint a reference stroke. If I paint another stroke with grain at 0%, you can see no texture has been applied to the stroke. I'll set the spacing lower to 25%. You can preview the effect of grain by adjusting the grain slider while watching the stroke preview. If grain is set too low, you won't be able to see any effect on this brush. This brush requires around 80 or 90% until it begins to show any grain. However, this varies from brush to brush. The more I increase grain, the more the medium is resisted by the features of the texture, so a higher grain value results in more grain being shown. And, as if grain wasn't confusing enough, some brush types can invert the grain pattern. This means that the white color from the paper is where your brush media will deposit on the canvas. Normally, black does this. For instance, I'll choose the contrasty random cracks paper, and paint a reference stroke with grain at 100% with the oily chunky brush. Next I'll select the hard glazing brush, set grain to 100%, and paint another stroke. You can see the pattern in the grain is reversed, and the cells are being filled when I use the glazing brush. The reason why glazing handles grain differently is because when you are glazing, you are using a wet medium. Wet media absorbs into the depressions of grain, leaving the peaks exposed. Dry media, on the other hand, does the opposite. Dry media deposits on the peaks of the grain, leaving the depressions exposed. If the grain doesn't look right when using a brush, you can also invert it in the papers panel. We can control grain intuitively using pen pressure. I'll select the worn pavement paper again. Next, I'll reset the oily chunky brush, and by default, this brush uses pressure as the grain expression. I'll paint a stroke that goes from light to heavy pressure. You can see that when I press lightly, the grain is more apparent. This is in line with what you would expect to happen if you press down firmly with a real oil pastel. More of the media would be forced into the cavities of the grain, thereby covering it entirely. This expression has been inverted so that it responds appropriately to pressure. One of the most effective ways to add randomness to a brush is to use the random grain properties. I'll select my custom brush called Random Chalk, create a large brush, and paint a test dab. You can see that this brush uses a captured dab, but random grain rotation and random grain position have also been applied. This can be better emphasized if I change the paper grain to something else, let's say small dots. I will increase the scale of the dots, and I'll click with my mouse to create a dab. You can see that dotted pattern inside of the dab. If I paint overlapping strokes, the dotted pattern builds up upon itself. If I turn random grain rotation and random grain position off, when I paint that same stroke, you can see the paper grain is no longer being overlapped. No matter how much I overlap my strokes, no matter how much I vary my pen pressure, that pattern is just too static looking. It doesn't feel natural. 
If we turn random grain rotation and position back on in paint, this helps the dotted pattern look more organic by adding some variation to it. That isn't to say there's a right or wrong way to use grain, it all depends on the kind of look that you're going for. In general, I prefer a more organic looking stroke, so I have random grain rotation and position enabled for my hard media brushes, blenders, and other brushes that utilize grain. But there are times when I do want a static paper texture rather than a dynamic one. You don't have to have both of the random grain properties enabled, you can enable one or the other to get different results. I'll select one of my custom papers called Halftone Fine Line, and if we only use random grain position and paint a few overlapping strokes, you can see what's changing is the horizontal and vertical position of this paper. By becoming offset, the striped pattern varies a bit with each dab. I'll paint a few more overlapping strokes using only random grain rotation, and you can see the striped pattern goes out of alignment because the pattern is rotating with each dab.